Good evening, everyone. Good evening. So glad to have you all here in this gorgeous, beautiful spring day. Um, welcome to everybody who's online. Um, hope you're all doing well. Tonight's class is going to be on discerning of spirits. And, and this is really important that we all get this and that we all understand that we all can flow and develop this gift within us because um, it's vital, especially for the day and age that we're in, because one of the things we have to understand, there's so much deception out in the world, and we have to know how to discern the truth from the lie, you know? So the spiritual gift of discernment is known as discerning of spirits. Uh, you know, you can call it the gift of discernment or distinguishing between spirits. Uh, I've heard it, you know, from, for so long, different terminology, but, but we're talking about discerning of spirits tonight. And the, the word, the Greek word is, um, uh, I don't even know how to say, diachrisis, and it means it's distinguishing, a discerning, a judging, judicial estimation to determine, to decree, to resolve, to pronounce an opinion concerning right and wrong. So when you're discerning, it's the ability to uh, judge and to decide the genuineness, genuineness of gifts from the spirit and, 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 you know, something that's from the spirit and something that's not, okay? Um, discernment is, an, is an, an incredible gift. Great. <laughs> now I can't see. The sermon's a great gift <laughs> that, um, that we all need, okay? Because we all need to know how to discern between good and evil. And um, discerning gives us spiritual insights into the invisible realm. And it's so important that we understand that. And we need Holy Spirit. And it's a supernatural gift. And so, you know, some might, might you know, like my family, my mom and you know, my sisters, all of us, we always had that gift. We, my mother would say, oh, I have ESP. <laughs> you know, this is pre-Jesus, okay? And, and we would just discern something. We'd walk in a room and just feel something. And, but we didn't have language for it. We didn't understand that it really it's a gift of the Lord. And so, um, you know, this is something that, that, that especially in deliverance, but not just deliverance, in your business, in your family, in your neighborhood, wherever you're at, you need to discern and ask questions and ask the Lord to give you guidance and to give you wisdom. And so we're going to really, um, you know, exp I'm going to expound on this tonight as best as I can. And, um, you know, I know, like, we can really do a couple of weeks of teaching on this, but... I'm going to try to do my best in getting all this information in here tonight. So, so the church really needs the gift of discernment. Yes. And, and one of the ways to really develop this gift is through the meditation of the word, right? And so, you know, to be not transformed by the world, but by the, re I mean, to not be conformed by the world, but by the, trans uh, by the renewing of our minds so that we're transformed. And that there's so much deception in the in the world there's so much deception in the church because people don't know the word right. yeah. That's right. and you need to know what the word of god says not what the world is saying right. not what the opinions of the world or opinions of people the bottom line is what does the word say about right. this because that's our guideline that's our foundation right mm -hmm. so you know this this gift helps us this to distinguish and i have it on your handout somewhere uh, hebrews five fourteen. Uh, that we have to exercise this gift so that we can discern between good and evil, yes. all right? So it's, we have to practice this thing. It's not just something that you just know so well. And um, because there's a maturing of this gift, which I'm going to get into. And uh, so it helps you to distinguish between the demonic realm, the angelic realm, and the human heart. And, and, you know, and that's the thing that we always constantly want to dialogue with the Lord and ask him to help us to understand and to, like, what, are, what am I sensing, you know, when I'm in this room? You know how sometimes you can walk in a place and you just have the creeps, right? Or, or you're talking with someone and everything looks right and they sound good, they smell good, but inside you have a red flag, right? There have been times that I have gone against that red flag and I have gotten in royal trouble, let me tell you. So we have to understand. So like that was, I was immature in the gift and I had, and I'm still learning. I had to learn how to ask questions, how to, how to um, you know, dialogue with the Lord or, or even with those that are in authority, that were in authority over me to ask them to help me to discern, help me to discern 
what I am discerning. Help me to understand what I'm discerning, okay? So the scripture here in 1 Corinthians 12, 7 through 11, um, I want you to see where this, port, this uh, you know, discerning of spirits is in the Bible, okay? And it says here, but each one, but to each one is given the manifestation of the spirit, the spirit, illum the spiritual illumination and the enabling of the Holy Spirit for the common good to one is given through the Holy Spirit, the power to speak the message of wisdom and to another, the power to express the word of knowledge and understanding according to the same spirit to another wonder working faith is given by the same Holy Spirit and to another, the extraordinary gifts of healing by the one spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy foretelling the future, speaking a new message from God to people. And to another, discerning of spirits, the ability to distinguish sound, godly doctrine from the deceptive doctrine of man-made religion and cults. To another, various kinds of unknown tongues. And to another, interpretation of tongues. All these things, the gifts, the achievements, and the abilities, the empower. The empowering are brought about by one and the same Holy Spirit, distributing to each one individually just as he chooses. So you see here, it's not that one, only one person has the gift. It's as we are flowing in the anointing, it's whatever we need is available to us, right? So if we're praying for healing, that gift is available for us because we're the hands of the Lord. We're going to pray. We're going to prophesy. We, see, this is for all of us. And this is what God wants us to really develop within our lives. He wants us to understand that. But Holy Spirit is our paraclete. He's the one that guides us. He's the one that gives us direction. But he wants us to have an expectation of, of miracles, have an expectation of breakthrough, of prophecy, to prophesy over something, to give a word of knowledge. This is for all of us. And so we have to develop this time. And it's not just for certain people. And you practice. Practice when you go food shopping. Practice when you go clothes shopping. Practice when you go wherever, shoe shopping. You know, whatever you're doing, you know, <laughs> practice. Whoever, whoever your, your um, you know, co-worker is, practice working and, and, and speaking. That's what I did when I first got saved. I didn't attend a church, and I've shared this before. And I would just read this and say, come here, let me pray. This says if I pray for you, you're supposed to get healed. And I was just shocked as the next person who got healed, you know, because that's how the word works. It's simple, childlike faith, all right? So the other scripture I want to read here is in 1 Corinthians 2, 13 and 16. And it says here, this is what we speak, not in words taught us by human wisdom, but in words taught by the Spirit. See, we're taught by the Spirit here. Explaining spiritual realities with Spirit-taught words. The person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from God, but considers them foolishness, right? And cannot understand them because they're discerned only through the Spirit. So the person with the Spirit makes judgments about all things, but such a person is not subject to merely human ju judgments, for who has known the mind of the Lord as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. So we get that. You know, the, when you don't, it's not just the people in the world. It's just like if you're not flowing in the things of the Spirit, it's foolishness to you. And so that's what it's saying. It's spirit taught. Your, your spirit has to be open to be taught of the Lord, right? And to understand what he wants us to see in the realm of the spirit. And so we can all learn. We can all learn to discern. If you're not, I'm sure everyone here, I'm sure, you're sent, you, you've sent something. You've, you've felt something about an individual. You've, you've walked in a room and you picked up something. You know, but now we're going to talk about how do we develop that, all right? And so... Um, but we have to mature in this, all right? So Colossians 2, 8 in the Passion says, Beware that no one distracts you or, or intimidates you in their attempt to lead you away from Christ's fullness by pretending to be full of wisdom when they're filled with endless arguments of human logic. For they operate with humanistic and clouded judgments based on the mindset of the world system and not the anointed truths of the Holy One or the Anointed One, okay? So I'm sure many of you here have had that, that encounter with people that just want to argue and just want to give you their opinion. And we find that in the church too. It's not just in the world, but it's like here's the bottom line. It's, 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 it's spiritually caught, and it's what the Spirit of the Lord is saying, and then we want to, we want to um, explain it in a way that, that it's palatable for them, but not, it's not always going to happen. Because we're dealing in a spirit realm, and there are demons a lot of times. There's a demonic realm that we're addressing, 
right? And so let's just take, for example, the media and a lot that, that's been taking place and how people have been so swayed by that. You have to discern truth. Listen, these people aren't the devil. The devil's the devil, but they don't know, right? right? So that's why we have to watch our hearts and how we respond to people because it is frustrating. It's aggravating because you, you know that it's a lie. You know that it's a half truth that they're saying and you can discern it. You can feel it. But we have to be careful and then we have to watch our hearts. And that's what I want to talk about a little bit because what we have to understand that if our soul isn't healthy or if we have a, a critical heart or if we have if we tend to be a little more judgmental, we're going to be a lot. We're going to be harsh in the way I respond to somebody or the way we sense something. Right. So we always have to be careful. And, um, and you know, and Lord knows we can get really in a, in a big fight over a lot that's in the media right now because, you know, we all have strong opinions about something, right? And so that's where I just have to back down and just say, all right, Lord, what are you saying about this and how am I to handle it? All right, right. All right because I don't want to act like the other person that I'm aggravated with, right? right? But I just want to, Lord, let me have the right heart attitude here because what does that accomplish? And, and you know who loves all that? The enemy. Because he loves to see everybody fighting with each other. Right. And calling each other names and thinking they're stupid and this one's a jerk over here. Come on. You know, and that's what the devil wants. Yeah. So, you know, again, we have, to, we have to really be careful about heart issues. In Matthew 7, 1 through 4, and I, and I typed it out in the, in the Passion. It says, do not judge, all right? Refu Listen, refuse to be a critic full of bias towards others, and you will not be judged. For you'll be judged by the same standard that you use to judge others. Yikes. The measurement you use on them will be used on you. Why would you focus on the flaw in someone else's life and fail to notice the glaring flaws of your own? How could you say to your friend, let me show you where you're wrong and when you're guilty of even more? All right, so we have to watch because a lot of times if there's unhealed areas in our hearts, it will cause our discernment to be off. When there's woundedness there, we will discern from a critical place rather than from a place of honor. Now, we have to judge a situation, but it's without the, the negative emotions, right? So, you know, there's certain politicians that we mentioned before that I will, that will remain nameless here. But, but, you know, part of us wants to like, you know, like, you know, she's of the devil, blah, blah, blah. And the Lord will always say to me, are you praying for her? And I'm like, no. <laughs> so that always helps balance me out, you know. And so, but, you know, when you see a person that's responding and acting like that, you want to know, like, what's up in their life, too, that they're so vile <laughs> and nasty. But in the meantime, we're people of truth. So we, listen, we want our prayers to be effective, right? So we have to have a right heart attitude in what we're discerning. Because then we can discern when, we, when, we're, when we're, you know, um, seeing something from a wounded heart, from a heart of trauma, from a heart of bitterness or anger or something, our discernment can be off. And our perception definitely can be off because, you know, you're, you can just discern something. And, and then that's why we have to deal with our own personal issues because you can walk in a room and discern they're looking at me and they're talking about me. That ever happened to you? Like, I don't know what they're looking at, you know, and you get the, the Patterson attitude, right? And so, um, you know, they're talking about me. I can just tell. I know they're talking about me. We're discerning incorrectly. And a lot of times that comes from rejection issues and different things that I already spoke about. But that's the thing we always have to ask the Lord, am I discerning correctly? There are times that I had to learn, in, even in church with certain people, that they're so articulate it seems like they're flowing in the things of the Lord and they're this and they're that. And, and everything in me is doing this check and check. And, and I remember one time I just totally blew it off. I thought, it has to be me. It can't. This person just seems so right on and they're really gifted. And I'm the one that's missing it, right? Well, it turned out that the person really caused a lot of problems. And so, you know, I learned it took me. I had to mature in a gift. I, I didn't... I didn't know how to handle it. And so it's something that we have to practice, but we do want to be careful that we just don't go and attack an individual. Or, or just always remember, what if it were you somebody was discerning something about? Would you want them to be kind about it or tear you apart and go talk about you to other people? 
So one of the things that the Lord's always said to me, he said, Tricia, if you're discerning something about an individual, first of all, ask me questions. Ask me, what do you want me to do about that? And, you know, my natural mind, I have to be honest with you, at the time would never be, you know, oh, well, let me pray for them. Usually it's like, what's up with them? Oh, my gosh, they have this anger problem. They need to really address it. And the Lord's like, I didn't ask you to be their judge. I asked you to discern something. I'm showing you to discern something. Now I want you to pray for them. But a lot of times you can discern something. You can discern something about an individual, uh, about a, a region you're in, about a, a place, a building that you're walking in. And you have to ask the Lord, first of all, why am I discerning this? Number two, is this my assignment? I have gotten in more trouble, <laughs> or not even trouble, but just worn out by doing things that the Lord never asked me to do. Wow. Take on things that I was never asked to take on. Wow. He said, I showed it to you, but you didn't ask me about it. You just assumed it was your assignment because you saw or you discerned it. And that's something we have to dialogue with the Lord all the time, and I'll wait. And I'll discern something, and a lot of times he's not, he doesn't have me say a word. He, uh, like you discern something about an individual, but he'll have me not talk about it. Just pray. Pray for that person. Right. And uh, Because the worst thing would be is having someone talk about you and going to other people and not confronting you. And it hurts your heart, right? Yeah. So we want to be careful about that. But I remember one time when we went to Mexico, and I, I shared this story with the church before, but... I was also struggling with a lot of fear when I was in Mexico. And when I go there, it's because I, I just get the creeps. Mexico is a wonderful place, trust me. But it just, there's a lot that I'm discerning and picking up over there and da da da. So our, our son came with us one time and he just needed a break from school. And, and I, this, I was, the fear gripped me so bad on this trip. It was terrible. And so, um, I didn't want him, like, you know, my son was, like, in his late 20s at the time. You know, he, I didn't want him going out. I wanted him to stay with us. And he's like, Ma, you know, I'm going out, you know. And so I just, this thing was getting to me. So then he started to hang out with these guys at the pool. And, of course, who does he hang out with? Guys that look like bikers. And I'm like, of all the people on, at the pool, this, this is who you want to hang out with, right? Well, see, now here's where I want to show you about discernment. So... And the one kid in particular, I mean, he was tattooed from the head to toe, had this, you know, that the Polynesian gone on his back. And, and, and I, listen, I don't have a problem with those people, but I was really in fear that day, really struggling, right? And uh, it was just I was picking up a lot. I just said, oh, my God, I want to get our heads cut off. You know, I was just, just one of those crazy things going on, right? Yeah. Anyway, I was over the top. So, um, hey, watch it. Watch it. I got some comments going on here. Anyway, so so what happened was um, we're outside, and they all came around where we were sitting by the by the beach at the beach or at the pool, and uh, I started talking with this one kid, and um, wow, this kid was really hurt in church. They threw him out. It was the Church of the Nazarene or something, and uh, just a lot of stuff went down. And I was able to minister to him. And we, we, we lit with our eyes saw just the, the wind of the Holy Spirit. I mean, every, we were all kind of freaked out by what we saw. This kid, for two hours I spoke to, had the most genuine heart. I loved him dearly. He was weeping. He rededicated his life to the Lord. Lives in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And I discerned incorrectly because of fear. See, he didn't do a thing wrong. He was just a wonderful kid that just didn't look like what I wanted my son to be with right now, you know, at that point. But ha so, again, I was just discerning, and I was also struggling. You see how when you can be in a place, you can be in a bad place or, or just having anger issues or really been hurt by someone, and you can discern something and discern by an unhealthy heart or by a soulless issue that's, that hasn't been addressed. And because my husband, I'm like, I said to my son, this is before we ministered to this kid, can't you just stay in here with us? He's like, no, I want to go out. <laughs> and so my husband said, what are you doing? I said, I know I'm really struggling with fear right now. I just don't know how to not feel this, what I'm feeling. Anybody that ever happened to you? So you just have to worship and pray. And, and I was just really pressing through. <laughs> and Peter, he's like, oh, God. I'm like, oh, Peter. So... <laughs> 
I'm going to smack him too. But I love him. I love you, hon. Anyway, so we had to be careful. And so he, Peter really did help me through this because he, that's one thing he doesn't struggle with. And he really helped me get through that. And so it was all a good, good time because then we were able to admit We took all those guys out to dinner. <laughs> you know, we, 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 it was just a wonderful time. But you see how that heart issue could have stopped all of that. And thank God for my husband. Well, of course, my son wasn't buying it, you know. But thank God for my husband that helped me walk through it. And that's why it's good to be accountable to people. It's good to connect with people that will help you get through, you know, issues when you're, when you're battling with that. So we have to be careful because, you know, church people have a name, right? What, what is it? They used to make fun of us on Saturday Night Live. What was it, church lady? We don't want to be the church lady. We don't want to have the self-righteous attitude that's looking down on everybody. The gift of discernment is so that we can help people. It's so that we, I'm happy when people have discerned things in me that help me get out of a mess, right? We've all been there. None of us have arrived. We don't walk on water. So we want to have that kind of compassion and heart attitude towards people. So that's one thing that, that we have to understand. And in Philippians 1.9 in the Amplified, it says, I pray, and this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more and extend to the fullest development and knowledge and all keen insight that your love may display itself in greater depth of acquaintance and more comprehensive discernment. As our love grows, our discernment grows. The love, it, it, I, you know what? I, I changed my message around. So I have scriptures on your handout. You're going to just have to figure it out yourself, okay? <laughs> I'm a preacher. I'm, I'm e it's easier for me to just preach. So anyway, I changed it again. And so anyway, but our love has to grow. And I've seen how I've grown in that because I'm more black, uh, you know, the personality is just very black and white. This is how it is, you know, and the Lord has helped me be a little softer and, in, in, you know, in the way I approach things. And so, um, you know, I, and I wanted that help. I said, Lord, I, you know, I want to I be an imitator of you. Jesus confronted people, but he walked in love. I mean, he didn't, you know, cower. He didn't bow down. I mean, you know, he didn't back down, rather. He, he, there's, a, there's a line in the sand that's drawn. Because the truth sets you free. And so that was the whole thing. Jesus wants to set people free. He doesn't want to put them in bondage, but he didn't want to shame them and act like the religious people, right? So the discernment comes from abounding love. And there's false discernment that's based on mistrust, suspicion, fear. And you can recognize it by the coldness around it. And then it comes out of criticism, right? True, true discernment is rooted in love. And so that was just something that whew, I had to watch because I would just discern stuff and I would, I would recognize that there was something there, but sometimes I would, I would handle it the wrong way. I didn't, I didn't see it through the eyes of the Lord and how can I help that individual? It was more of, well, that person's really, you know, has an ugly spirit and they're battling with anger and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I would see it and the Lord said to me, well, what are you doing about that? I'm not showing you that just so that, you, you know, can see it even if you're not calling that, that person out on it. But are you praying for him? A lot of times the Lord will just have me discern something and just pray. He didn't tell me to, to confront. Now, if I'm in that person's life and I have, I have that platform, that's a different story. There are two, then there's different times in the church, too. You know, people that you have to minister to. But it's, again, it always has to, always has to come from a place of love and honor. Always put yourself in that place. What if it were you? Right. That's right. All right. So, um, and then our perception is based upon the condition of our heart. So that, again, is always where, Lord, show me my heart, Lord. You know, I don't want, I, I just want you to reveal my heart. Because the Bible says our heart is deceitfully wicked above all. So a lot of times we think we're really doing okay, and we're not. A lot of times, you know, we have an attitude. There can be jealousy there can be fear there's uh, you know all kinds of different things that that starts happening within us and and we're we operate out of that so anyway enough said about that so um in proverbs 4 23 in the, in the passion it says so above all guard the affections of your heart in other words keep watch observe your heart you know for they affect all that you are pay attention to the welfare of your innermost being for from there flows the wellspring of life so if our human heart is left unchecked, 
it can lead us astray. So we always want to check our heart. We always, and I'm not saying you have to be a navel seer. It's just, Lord, show me my heart. I want to see my attitude in this. I want to know where were you in this? How do I respond in this situation? Okay. So, um, so when you're dealing with, when you're, when you're discerning something, I, I wrote here, I think it's on your handout. If not, you'll get these notes too. All right. So you always ask questions and then you wait and you listen to the response to the, from the Lord. And then, as I said to you before, ask the Lord, is this my assignment? I am telling you, I have seen more people get in a mess of trouble or worn out because it was not their assignment. Same with, uh, I'm going to tell you something. There's I mean, we're not talking about territorial issues on this class when we will, but there are territorial issues and you can discern something in the land. I have seen people get in more trouble because they took on themselves what they discerned in the territory. You don't do that. You have, there's, there's a group of people, there's apostles, there's people, you know, like if we were ever to do that, like Chuck is our overseer, Chuck Pierce, we go to him, we ask him, do you think, what are you sensing? This is what we're sensing. What do you think about it? Then we get aligned with other leaders in the state, you know, so there's a, there's a corporateness, there's a, that you get together in unity because we can't take down that. And then it's, it's, there's all methods in the way we go about it. So anyway, that's a whole nother teaching, but so you, you want to be discerning and you ask the Lord, do you want me to confront it or pray? Submit your revelation to an authority person or somebody that you're connected with that you like, you're not really sure, you know, and you ask them, remember Jesus, remember when the, that, um, when the, the uh, father said to Jesus, you know, listen, um, your disciples couldn't cast out this devil. And he said, and here my son is. And he was, you know, rolling on the ground and everything. And Jesus, what did he do? He dialogued with him. He interviewed him. So it's okay that we interview, we ask questions, you know, and, and even in, in what we're discerning, sometimes you're in a situation, you know, you have to ask questions. Don't just, just, you know, sometimes you just have to ask questions. All right. So in order to gain more information, all right, sometimes you ever notice this, um, like you may know someone, right. And you know, behind the scenes that this person really is in major sin or really isn't what they're all seeing because let's say the person's so charismatic and seems so gifted and you're not and people are not discerning i see that so often in leviticus it said the priests had to be discerning they couldn't go into the temple if they weren't discerning and so we as a body of christ need to be discerning we need to be alert in the realm of the spirit and discern what are we sensing what is this person speaking truth is this, pra you can practice watching a TV show. My husband would always say to me, so who's, who's the bad guy, right? And I'll be that one, you know, and nine times out of 10, I'm right, but it's because you practice. And so you can practice like that. You can practice with you, each other and praying and, um, you know, so anyway, God wants us to hear and see in the realm of spirit. He wouldn't have it in the scriptures. Right from, like I said to you, from uh, Hebrews 5.14, I'll read it again. I'll read it out of the um, uh, New American Standard. It says, solid food is for the mature who, because of practice, have their senses trained yeah. to discern good and evil. Yeah. All right? So it's a sensory process. All right? It's not intellectual. See, the Greek mindset is that we try to, intellectual, uh, to intellectualize everything. We try to understand through our mind. It's not the way it is. Jesus, is, it, the, the spirit of the Lord is a spirit. So it's spirit to spirit. We connect with our spirit. It's not always going to intellectually make sense. Or how about this? A lot of times my husband and I will be in dialogue and I'll send something and he wants an answer and response. And I'm like, I don't know how to tell you. I just don't know how to articulate it. I just know something's not right. Well, what's not right? I don't know what's not right. I just know I have a check. Does anybody ever get that? Well, you can't articulate what exactly you're sensing, but you know I need to put a pause on this. We're not moving any further because I don't feel right about it. I have gone beyond that, and we've gotten in trouble over that. And so I've learned. I've learned my mistakes. And so I try to be very sensitive to that. But when I get that kind of a feeling, I'm not moving unless the Lord tells me oh, the next step. So you want to practice that. So we discern through our physical senses and our emotions. All right. So that's what can make it a little difficult because you're like, well, wait a minute. I think I'm really feeling this thing. Um, like, for example, there was one time I was walking 
in a hallway and I was walking really fast and I walked past, I, I wasn't paying attention, I just was in a hurry to get someplace and I had gotten this most excruciating pain in my hip. And I'm like, oh my gosh, and I'm, I'm, I'm doing one of these things and so like try, barely trying to walk and I, then the Lord said to me, you're picking up, it, it is a word of knowledge, but you're also discerning somebody struggling and someone and I turned around and asked the person the person just had a hip operation and they were in pain how about there have been times that I would walk in service totally happy and I'd walk in and I have Ajuna I'm angry there's like something and then I didn't I'm, I would think to myself I was perfectly fine until I walked in here what in the world is going on and I didn't you know the Lord would have to always remind me you're discerning what's happening here an individual struggling and then I would get up and release a word of knowledge about that and pe people would come up for healing so be alert a lot of people struggle with emotional issues that are discerning things they're taking it on themselves and they're not recognizing it I'm telling you because you can pick up, like you're, you're sensitive. Some people are more sensitive than others. You can pick up what's going on in the room. You can pick up well, who's sitting next to you. You can pick up, you know, an emotional issue or outbursts or fear. I remember one time I was in Arizona, and we were at this uh, leaders meeting with all these very well-known uh, leaders that, you know, in my mind, I was young in the Lord. I'm thinking, well, they're like who these famous people are. They don't have problems. So... I, I go, right, hello. Uh, so I'm in the room. I walk in the room, and, all, and I'm, I'm, we're worshiping, and, and now I'm getting fear really bad again. Another, as you can tell, I had fear issues. And so I was really struggling, and I said, I went, and I got so nervous that I said to the people I was with, I'm leaving. I'm flying back home today. I'm leaving this meeting. That's how nervous I got. And they said, what do you mean you're going to leave? I said, I don't know. Something's really wrong here. I'm getting the heck out of here. So... And one lady got a hold of me. She goes, oh, you're just picking up what's in the room. I said, no. I said, I'm really, I'm really struggling here tonight. She goes, no, 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 let me pray for you. You're picking up what's in the room. Sure enough, after she prayed, that's what I was picking. I was fine. But I was all set to leave, fly home. Wow. So, again, but I, I didn't, you know, years ago, they didn't talk a lot about this stuff. Right. So I, I wasn't sure what, what I was struggling with. And so, uh, anyway, so... So there's a learning curve. So it's, it's really important that you're accountable to someone. It's really important that you're under, you know, in alignment with people because you want to learn. You want to grow. Yes. And you want to be teachable. The Bible says a wise man or woman has a teachable spirit. So um, there are many different ways and many different issues that, that we can look at this. Um, there's also heart issues, right? So it's not always that you're discerning the demonic. But there's, you know, when you, you're around someone, you just know that they have a bad motive. And I was thinking about, what about uh, uh, Mary in the Bible when she went to wash Jesus' feet? She was anointing him, really, for his burial. And Judas, what, what was his problem? He all had greed. He had a greed issue. And he said, oh, come on, you know, what is she doing? Because she, whatever she broke open, you know, the oil um, was, it was a lot of money. It was worth, a, I think it was one year's wages. And he said, what is she doing with this? He said, we could give the money to the poor. He can care less about the poor. But Jesus discerned that. Jesus knew. And he honored Mary, and she's still honored to this day. But see, there's, so not everything's a devil, Right. So, again, it's discerning, just saying that, you know, that heart, that heart issue there, the person's motive was totally off. Yeah. And so, again, it's like, OK, Lord, I'm recognizing that. How do we deal with it? And so that's why when you're studying the Bible and you see how did Jesus handle these different things? Right. He didn't. He, I mean, he didn't tolerate anything from the Pharisees and the Sadducees, but he also, yeah, I mean, you know, he put his foot down, but he didn't waste his time getting in their face right so we have the word of god so um i love in in, in um john the book of john seven twenty four in the new living translation it i love the way it's worded it says look beneath the surface so you can judge correctly so we need to we need to get into that place where, Lord, let me go deeper. Let me see what you really want me to see in this situation. And so hidden things are revealed so that we can come into a greater place of authority. The church can come into a greater place of authority. We have to wake up. We have to be alert in the realm of the spirit. We cannot allow the world's opinion come into the church 
and tell us how we're going to run the church, right? Jesus is a God of love. Jesus died on the cross for freedom, for people to die. I mean, for people to live who are in a place of, of death, who are in a place of, de, of, of bondage and captivity. And so Jesus is our designer. So why are we going to listen to what the world's telling us, how we're going to operate, versus what the Word of God is saying? There's resurrection life. There's supernatural power. Listen, God is setting us up for end time harvest. Like anything we've ever seen, people are going to have to know how to address people that are struggling there's going to be and I've always said this for years end time deliverance that's going to have to take place multitudes of people that are going to need Jesus Amen. they're going to need freedom we have we can't wait until we come to a church service right. the Lord is saying use what you have how have you been set free minister to that person but Jesus wants us living in freedom that doesn't mean that that we um, I live a perfect life that we don't have issues, we don't have problems. But what it's what the Lord is saying to us, He wants us to live a place that we're up here. He's saying, Come up to a higher place in me. And so that's my heart. I'm like, Lord, I am pressing into you, I am worshiping, I am praying, and I just thank God for the love of God. It's not hard, it's not tedious. He just loves us. And He doesn't want us getting like um, stopped up. With, with heart attitudes that would hold us back. But he wants us to be a people that are wise as serpents and gentle as doves, that knows how to discern, that we discern something, but we walk in that kindness and the love of God, but we're not going to take any nonsense, right? So Hebrews 4.12 says in the Passion, For we have the living word of God, which is full of energy, like a two-mouthed sword. It will even penetrate to the very core of our being where soul and spirit, bone and marrow meet. It interprets and reveals the true thoughts and secret motives of our heart. The best way to really grow in discernment is meditate on the word. Yeah, that's right. Because the word of God is what is like a mirror for us. And how many times like you can be in an icky place and then you get in the word and it's, it's like water to your soul. You just start feeling so much better. Yeah. You know, we get our mind off of ourselves and just start to focus on the word because Jesus is the word. Right. And so when you start meditating on that, it's like, oh, yeah, Lord. And my heart is always, Lord, show me my heart. You know, Lord, you know, I just thank you that, that you're uncovering things. You're revealing my true thoughts. You're, you're revealing any secret motives because sometimes we don't know. And so, um, you know, and that's the thing. So Holy Spirit is always more than happy to show us. Holy Spirit is always wanting to show us. And he, he's a discerner of our thoughts and the intents of our heart. He will uncover that. And so we have to ask the Lord, first of all, you know, to discern our own motives. Last thing I want to do is hurt anybody, right? So knowing and studying the Word of God is one of the most essential ways to learn, to discern the voice of the Lord and increase in discernment. And then, of course, you practice, right? So uh, we listen to what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. And so, you know, in the end times, in Matthew 24, 4 and 5, it says, Jesus warns of deception and follows it up with warnings of false prophets, warnings not to be deceived. So there's a lot of deception, as I said earlier, going on. And we have got to discern and hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying, even for our own lives. I mean, because there's a lot of loose living in the church. And there's a lot of loose, just, I mean, there are denominations that are not following the, the word of God. I don't know why people go to church if you're not following the word of God. <laughs> What's the point? And so, you know, King Solomon in 1 Kings 3, 7 through 12, he, um, when, when he was getting... Um, crowned as king you know he said to the lord he says listen what i the, jesus said to him what what do you want and he could have asked for anything he says i want to be able to discern between good and evil right. he said i want to be able to judge and rule these people of yours yeah. well we have to do the same thing we need it in our personal family lives you need it in your businesses you need it when you go get your car checked and your tires checked you need to <laughs> you need you need it for whatever wherever you're going right you need to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Now, you remember um, that word discern there in 1 Kings 3 means it's B-I-Y-N. It means to understand, to be cunning diligently, to instruct, to have intelligence. Oops. And that's what the Lord does. You know, he, he helps us. We have the mind of Christ. He helps us to be intelligent in situations. Remember in Acts 16 when, when Paul and... Um, 
who was there? It was uh, Paul and Silas when they were going through the town there, right? And the lady kept going up and, and saying, I remember when I first got saved, I didn't understand that scripture. And I said, these are men of the most high God. And she kept saying it and saying it. And after like a couple of days, Paul's like, you know, I'm going to get rid of this woman. And he said, look, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over you. And he bound that spirit of divination that she was operating in. How did he know that? He discerned it. And now that was a territorial demon because the whole town went upside down. And then they put him in jail as a result of that, you know, but the Holy Spirit broke him out. But, but see, they, they had discerned that there was a spirit there. There are people, listen, I know people that would say, oh, but they're such a nice per cut person. They're clapping their hands in church. I'm like, that person's a devil. And I, you can discern it, you know. Now, of course, I had to learn how to soften that. But, but you know, but, but no, but that was so true. You know, I, oh, but they're clapping their hands. What, so what do I care about? Listen, the devil knows the scriptures. People come to church thinking they know more in Jesus. You know, some of them could be witches. You know, they've, that's happened. And so, anyhow, so you have to discern. Just because people are all here, right, coming to, not, not any of you people, but just because people come to church, that doesn't mean they have the right intention. That's why we're always watching. We're seeing and we're checking them out, you know, just looking. Because, you, you know, you want to protect the people, too. But we've had people come in here with wrong intentions. Oh, wow. Gotta watch some of these men, huh? Oh, wow. Checking out the young girls. Oh, wow. Checking out the girls. Hey, listen, God wants you to have a partner, but you know, listen, we don't want you to have bad intentions. Wow. Anyway, so remember in Acts chapter 5, Ananias and Sapphira, oh, wow. right? That used to bother me too. I'm thinking, oh my gosh. You know, they came to uh, Peter and said, hey, you know, they lied. They said, I don't know why they couldn't just be honest and say, you know what? We were going to give you the whole portion, but we decided to give you a part of the money. No, they lied. And then they died. I'm like, oh, boy. And so, <laughs> you know, that was serious. But Paul, the, Peter discerned it. He knew they were lying. Right. And so discernment helps us to see what the natural eye can't see. Right? right? Now, I'm not saying we're going to pray for people, and if they don't say, tell the truth to us, they're going to die. All right? That was with Peter. And so I know there's a lot more to this. Now, remember in Luke 13, and I'm going to read you this portion. I taught on this a couple months ago. It says there was a woman there who for 18 years had an infirmity caused by a spirit, a demon of sickness. She was bent completely forward and utterly unable to straighten herself up or to look upward. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him. and He said, woman, you are released from your infirmity. In this particular case, this woman's infirmity was a result of a demon. Right. Now, that's where you have to be careful. Not everybody who's sick has a demon. Right. But in this particular case, Jesus discerned this woman had a demon. I remember years ago, you know, we would hear people talking. If someone was sick, it was like, what did you do wrong? Right. And, and you probably have a spirit and there's something like that. And you were ashamed, you know, you felt uncomfortable about that. And you were afraid to even let someone know that you weren't feeling well because you were afraid that they were going to tell you that you had a demon in you or something, you know. So you have, that's, again, the, the beauty of the Holy Spirit. And he'll help us. You know, and we, I've blown it so many times. And then you just, like, learn from that. And, and that, you know, you know that God's love wants people to be whole and restored. That's the whole purpose of all this. It's not to, to Nate, you're this, and I'm going to uncover you in front of people. If, oh, my gosh, and when you see something like that, that is not the spirit of the Lord. You never correct in front of people. You, you bring that per You always think of yourself that you want the same respect and honor right? You go to your, your leader or that, your employer or somebody that's, and just say, hey, this is what I'm discerning. I, I, I could be totally off. What do you think? Someone that you can trust, right? Yeah. Because again, that person's very valuable. Yeah. And I, you know, I always try to just discern and try to put myself in that place, all right? All right, so I told you about how to increase in this gift, and that would be through the Word of God. So, you know, I was also thinking about this, about bank tellers. How do they know the, the real from the fake? They had to always have the real thing, the money. They, so then when they had, uh, you know, um, the, the um, counterfeit, um, they knew because they knew the real thing. Right. So that's why, again, when you know the word, you say, wait a second. Even when the enemy is coming against you individually. And so that's where we have to discern. And a lot of times it's hard because you're, 
it's in your every fiber in your being. You feel like a, a jerk or a low life, or you know, I'm I'm just blowing it left and right, or I'm just stupid, or I'm you know, they're rejecting me, and you know, but you're in agreement with it. You have to discern the voice. Whose voice is louder? Are you listening to the enemy's voice? Whose voice? Are you discerning properly? You'll never get married. You'll never have this. You're never going to have enough money. You're never going to, you know, with this, you know, so then what would I would always do is say, wait a minute. Is this lining up with the word? Right, that's right. Because even though I might feel it a hundred percent, I'll go back because I know it's not God. Right. He watches over his word to perform it. He magnifies his word over his name. And that's what always helps me get through it. Because let, let me tell you, we all go through it. So, you know, so then we have to discern. In all the counseling we do, that's what's happening. People aren't really discerning what's happening. Right. Listen, I'm not always discerning what's happening. That's why I need to talk about it. You know, sometimes you're so caught up in the midst of something that you're really struggling with. And you just need a perspective. You need someone to just say, hey, here's, what, here's what's happening. It, it, it doesn't even change your situation, but it just helps you to get the right perspective again, right? So we want we hear in the spirit realm that a lot of times, all right, so God speaks through our senses, right? So we can sense things. How many times, you know, like I said earlier, you can, what about when you're in a service and you get the goosebumps? How many times we say, oh my God, if you have goosebumps, you know, a lot of times that's Holy Spirit. Or you can just feel the weightiness, the glory, the kabod of God on you yes. right how many times i mean i know and i've shared this before um you know you can smell the fragrance of the lord have you ever smelt the fragrance of god or just a beautiful there's been times i've during worship i've smelled bread now, i love bread but i know that there was no bread in church i there's been times at home that i would just be worshiping and i smell roses and there, I don't have any roses, you know, and I know it's just a fragrance of the Lord. It's a beauty of the Lord. But then there's times you smell demons and they stank. <laughs> you can, they smell like, they, you know, rotten eggs at times, just an unclean. Um, it can smell like sulfur. Um, you know, there have been times that I, I'll smell someone first before I know who they are. I'll turn around and say, ooh, I know what that person has. But. But, again, the, even there, there have been times the Lord doesn't tell me to address that yet because that person might not be ready. You want the person to be ready to receive. You don't want to go up to that person and say, you know, when you walked in, I smelled something on you, and I know it's a devil. You don't want to do that, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> you want to use a little wisdom. So just remember, if it was you. So there's different impressions that we get. There, I remember one time I was in a meeting, and my friend Jamie Lash, who wrote the book, A Kiss a Day, and it's a wonderful book, and it, it's on the two chapters of the Song of Solomon, and it's just it was one of the things that catapulted me into studying the Song of Solomon. And anyway, I remember she was speaking, and I literally was feeling the wind of the Holy Spirit. And, of course, you know, at first now, in my natural mind, I'm looking for an air vent. I'm looking to see if the door is open, the air is on, and it just kept blowing on me and blowing on me. Yeah. And I realized it was the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You know, so there's different ways that the spirit of the Lord will, will minister to you and discern and you'll discern. And I remember one time I was just crying out to the Lord and I just I had my head down and I felt this heavy hand on my shoulder. And I knew it was the an angel or who, I don't know who it was. I just knew it was Godhead and I just couldn't get up. I mean, I remember the presence of the Lord. I never forgot that. And so there's times, ask the Lord, let, you know, just say, Lord, I just want, listen, you're not going to, you're not serving the Lord just so you can feel things, right? right? But, but when it happens, Lord, let my spirit man be sensitive to what you want to reveal to me. All right. And so, um, th so there's different ways, different impressions, you know, that, that, that we can hear from the spirit of the Lord so we can see. We can hear, right, all through our five senses. And uh, you can discern when somebody's talking. I mean, you don't need to be, you know, a, a rocket science, a scientist to hear someone speaking out of anger and bitterness and resentment. But, you know, again, you, you can discern what the Holy Spirit's trying to reveal to you. How many times when you fly into a certain area, or like me in Mexico, or if you're in certain areas, you, you pick up what's going on in that area? Yeah. It's just like, ooh. Or, or, you know, I remember uh, my son and I were on a boardwalk down at Seaside. I remember we walked past this one store, and he said, oh, he goes, we have to get out of here. Like, I mean, he was discerning. I said, you are discerning what's in there. It was an occult store. 
So you can discern the witchcraft. You can discern something that's not right. And so please don't, don't ignore that dialogue. Ask someone to help you with that if, if you're not familiar. I still ask because I, you know, I don't have it all down. So in Matthew 7, 15 through 20, about false prophets, listen to this. It says, constantly be on your guard against phony prophets. Let me just say this, against phony media, against politicians, right. against what's going on in America. Constantly be on guard. They come disguised as lambs, appearing to be genuine, but on the inside they're like wild, ravenous wolves. You can spot them by their actions. Oh, yes. We had that happen in our family. We had um, a, a, a Paisan, an Italian buddy, that would come, and, and you know my, my family was from Italy, and they spoke, they were from Italy, and he was the insurance guy. Well, they were giving him insurance money, and this wonderful man that was kind and funny like a lamb and, and just seemed so charismatic stole all the money. Oh, wow. All right? So you have to be discerning. You can spot them by their actions for the fruit of their character will be obvious. Oh, yeah. After a while, when you're with them, you'll know by their fruit. Yes. You won't find sweet grapes hanging on a thorn bush, and you'll never pick good fruit from a tumbleweed. So if the tree is good, it will produce good, free, but if it, good fruit, but if, it's, if the tree is bad, it will bear only rotten fruit and deserves to be cut down and burned. And you'll know them by the obvious fruit of their lives and ministry. Check out their lives. Yeah. Listen, it's not that the people are perfect, but if they're not integrous and they're not honest and, you know, just always lying or, you know, just being deceptive in things, you know, that's a clue. And so, you know, sometimes people are like, well, you know, you just want to show the love of God. Yes, you want to show the love of God, but de be discerning. Don't let them get over on you and take advantage of you. Right. You're hurting them. Oswald Chambers says, discernment is God's call to intercession, never to fault finding. Wow. Right? So, so we want to, to understand that the Holy Spirit wants us really developing this gift. And I'm going to be closing with this. And I know this is not on your handout. So, um, so in 1 John 4, 1 in the Amplified, it talks about testing the spirits, all right? So, beloved, do not believe every spirit speaking through a self-proclaimed prophet. Instead, test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Because many false prophets and teachers have gone out into the world. The Bible says we need to test the spirits. Right. All right. First of all, if a person now let's now let's take it in the religious sector, if, if like in church or you're listening to something online or is it scriptural? It always has to the foundation has to be the word. Right. What they're saying is it scriptural. All right. Does it bring glory to God? Or does it draw attention to the man? All right. Does the person bear good fruit in your life? All right. Um, are people drawn into a deeper, more committed relationship, you know, or, or they want to serve that person as an idol? That's not right. Um, is it sensual? I remember one time we were in Long Island and Rodney Howard Brown was ministering. And it was just a powerful, powerful ministry. I remember him laying hands on me and, and it was in the 80s and, and he's, and lay hands on me, and he's talking about being an intercessor, right? And I remember it was the first time that I ever heard of Reese Howell's book, The Intercessor. And it was like it, like I went to the store, and it literally like jumped out on me, you know? And oh, I love that book. If you've never read it, you need it, because you, really we're all called to intercede, and that's one of the other ways of developing this gift, right? And so there was a woman there. <laughs> so we're, we're like in the second row, and there's this woman doing this dance. And I'm like, Lord Jesus... I don't know what kind of a dance that was, but it wasn't a Holy Ghost dance. And so she was doing a dance, and I'm like, woo, Jesus. And so she had moves on her, uh -huh. and I thought, oh. You know, but I, I, was, I was new on all this stuff, and I'm like, woo, Jesus. And so it was very sensual, right? And so I was just wondering, like, is anyone going to say anything to her, you know? But, you know, so again, even something like that, like we've had situations in church. Yeah, you know, my thing is I don't ever want to shame anybody, right? right? Yeah. So we would try to like get our arm around the person, kind of like just move them off a little bit, you know, <laughs> because you don't want to shame a person. You right. want them set free. Yeah. And so, you know, you just need to use some wisdom there. All right. So is it just pleasing to your soul? Or, or is it really, is, the spirit, are you, is your spirit man really getting challenged, all right? 
And then does it bear witness in your spirit? You know how you can, I remember I was looking up something recently and the person was talking about a scripture in the Bible, but he was called a medium. I'm like, wait a second, something's not gelling here. You know, in Deuteronomy 18, it says anything in, you know, witchcraft, the uh, horoscope, um, spiritual readings and all that kind of stuff. It's an abomination to the Lord. Medium is one of the, the things that's an abomination. Why would you then have, he was doing a teaching, but he, but he had in his, um, uh, his website that something, whatever his name was, medium, right? Now, if I didn't see that and you were just reading, a lot of what he had was all scripture. It looked good. But I thought, I'm not reading this. He has medium in his name. Why would you have a medium, right? So a lot of people don't pay attention to this. But the Spirit of the Lord is saying, be alert. Wake up. Yeah. Watch what you're doing because that's how you're lulled into some of these things. You know, in the occult, when you go to, like, if you listen to John Ramirez, right, and he was a high priest in, in his which occult thing, when, when he went, was uh, hired to put a curse on somebody, they would, he would, uh, they would pay him like $25,000, Whenever there's the pretty much the occult involved, there's always a lot of money involved. That's the other thing that you have to be careful. I'm not saying that if someone charges that they're in the occult. I'm just saying you have to be careful with certain people just always after money. You just, you know, you just have to be careful with some of that. And so just discern because some people are, are not sincere in trying to get over. And so, like, you know, like... Uh, some of the things online about trying to get money from you. Just, just use your head, right? So anyway, so let's see. In Philippians, you know, for, and the other thing is, too, you get a peace about where you're at. If you're not in peace, that's the other thing. You know, there's a scripture in Romans, and in, in, I think it's in the Amplified Version. It says, let, let peace be the umpire in your heart. And so let peace call the shots. Because a lot of times you're discerning and you're watching. And that's where, I'll, let's say, if I really don't know how to, how, to, I, how to deal with whatever I'm battling with or whatever I'm discerning, not battling with, I'll pause. I'll pull back. And I'll ask the Lord, what, what is, is it me? Do I have an issue here? Am I judging incorrectly? Or am I really sensing something? And then sometimes it'll just lift. Or sometimes I'll just have to wait. And sometimes it was just me. And uh, or maybe, uh, you know, so there's so many different ways you have to come at it. But make sure you're not coming at it from a critical condemning heart Now you can conf still confront the person, but or the situation, whatever it is. But make sure you come at it that you really have you know, heard from the Lord and that the, you get the green light from the Lord to address the situation. All right. So again, we, we are all beings that we're spiritual beings. We have the spirit of the Lord. We hear the spirit of God and the Lord gives us discernment and he wants us to recognize. I mean, oh my gosh, just in, like in dealing with in deliverance, um, when, when we're praying with somebody, the, the Holy Spirit will give you names. I, I was dealing with someone one time and this person was, was very steeped in the occult. And the person really couldn't remember a lot of whatever she was, you know, what her past was. And the Lord gave us the words of knowledge. And, and I mean, we discerned the spirits that we had to take authority over and get her free. It was, I mean, it was amazing. I got was shocked. I mean, I, I'm, I'm always shocked. But it's just so beautiful how the Holy Spirit responds and reveals. And this person got gloriously set free. So that's a beautiful thing. And then, you know, you, you do recognize and you do sense um, the angelic realm, too. And um, that's a whole other teaching. But I'm, I just want to read you Psalm 103, 20 and 21. It says, Praise the Lord, you angels of his, you powerful warriors who carry out his decrees and obey his orders. Praise the Lord, all you warriors of his, you servants of his who carry out his desires. In, in, in Hebrews, it says that the angels are, are ministering servants unto us, right? We don't pray to angels, but the Lord, we all have an angel. Our angels are all in here. And you can discern when there's a presence of the angels. You can discern the atmosphere change. And, you know, but that's a whole nother teaching. But that is something also when, you remember, discerning is not just, as I said earlier, it's not just for the demonic. There's for, it's for the angelic. Ask the Holy Spirit, let me see that realm. 
You know, we all have, you know, he gives his angels charge over us. He protects us. There's angels that protect us. We can ask the Lord to, Lord, would you release your angels, your ministering angels to minister to our family members, minister to these people, minister to our government leaders. Lord, you know, he does, he, the angel, remember in the book of Daniel and when Daniel was praying for 21 days and it says that, that the angel came to him and he says, you know, we were held up for 21 days by the prince of Persia. He says, but we came because of your words. Right. That's why it's important that when we're praying, we're praying words of faith. We're decreeing the word of God. Right. Listen, God knows our problem, but God responds to the word and faith that that's why it's good to pray the scriptures. That's why it's good to, you know, that, that we, we pray in faith and decree the word of God for breakthrough. Yeah. So anyway, so I always ask the Holy Spirit, just show me, you know, and um, I mean, like I said, I've, I've discerned it, I've felt it, but I've never seen it with my physical eye yet. But, um, you know, the Lord can do whatever he wants and show me that I'd be more than happy to. The other thing is, too, is discerning when the presence of the Lord is there. Yeah. Right. So you can discern the presence in your room, in your house, when you're praying, you can discern it in church. You can feel the shift when it comes, yeah. and you want to be really sensitive to that. And some people aren't. Some people get all bent out of shape if you're going longer in worship or whatever it is. Listen, we're trying to tap into, because when that presence comes in, when the heavens open up, things that you're battling with for 10 years, you can get healed. Yeah. And so, like, people are like, you know, like if they're looking at their watch or they want to leave, well, then they can get up and leave. But the thing is, it's like, look, we're done with all that. We're here to honor the Lord, and Lord, I mean, hey, listen, years ago, they would have services for five and six hours, so listen, enjoy where you're at now, but, but listen, we can press into the Holy Spirit and, 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 just, and just worship him and glorify his name. God wants to break open in our lives. Listen, seeker friendly. I want to be Holy Ghost friendly. I want the fear of the Lord. I want to honor his presence. That's what's brought deliverance and transformation and change in my life. And Lord knows we need it. I still need it. I want his, I love his presence. So I'm not going to settle. And I don't think any of us should settle for anything less. The glory of the Lord, you know, it says, let God arise and our enemies be scattered so that the glory of the Lord is risen upon us, right? So Holy Spirit just saying to us, we can stand now. The Holy Spirit wants us to, to just understand that God wants us to go into a deeper place. He wants that breaker anointing on all of us. He wants us to break through in ways that we have never experienced before. There's the suddenlies of the Lord coming. And God is saying, listen, are you prepared? Or do you have a heart of expectation for what he wants for each and every one of us? So I'm going to pray. And, and I'm going to just release impartation, but um, just, I'll just see how the Holy Spirit wants us to pray, okay? And if anyone's battling with any kind of, like, heart issues or rejection or issues, you know, I can pray for you afterwards, all right? Because that will hinder the way you discern. So, Lord, we just thank you that you are so good. Lord, your word says, taste and see that the Lord is good. And so, Lord, we honor you this night. We thank you that you have given us weapons in our tool belt. You have given us weapons to overcome and to walk through and to break through, oh God. You have given us the ability to see in the realms of the Spirit. And so, Lord, where, there, where we have... Um, uh, scar tissue or we have cataracts in our eyes god would you remove it lord would you open up our ears to hear god we want to discern with the heart of the lord we don't want to have a calloused hard heart or a full finding heart and if we do lord we just we just ask you to forgive us right now because lord we just thank you that you want us to come up higher like it says in revelation 4 1 come up higher that i can show you things to come and so, Lord, we don't want to stay in the past. We don't want to keep looking backwards. But, we, Lord, we want to move forward and cross over. Yeah. And so, Lord, I just thank you for discerning of spirits. I thank you that we, we operate with discernment through, in, in, with the prophetic. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're activating the gift within us, Lord. We just thank you for an activation of discerning of spirits in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, I just thank you that you're, you're just causing us to be alert in our spirit, just awakening us and be very sensitive to your spirit. And we say yes to that, Father. 
Lord, you said in your word that no good thing will you withhold from those who walk uprightly. This is a good thing, God. And we say yes, and we thank you. We just thank you that you're, you're bringing us into a deeper place in you. You're giving us deeper understanding. You're, you're uh, excelling this gift. You're, you're developing this gift in a way that, that we'll be shocked. There's an acceleration in all that the Lord is doing now at this time. So, Lord, I bless each and every person here. I bless everyone who's watching online. I just thank you, Father, that you're activating this gift within us. You're activating our dream life. You're activating the prophetic. You're activating the miraculous within us because they all work together. Yeah. So, Lord, we just thank you. And once again, we decree you are good, and we thank you for all you're doing within our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Amen.